Ladies and gentlemen, the Kalenjin nation must gather enough courage and face William Samoy Arap Ruto, the president of the Republic of Kenya, head on, instead of hiding behind his employees like Davis Chirchir. Earlier today, Davis Chirchir was humiliated and embarrassed in front of William Samoy Arap Ruto and indeed in front of the entire republic when he was heckled and could not even speak in Bomet. Congo is missing uh, Your Excellency, the President, Congo is a moon, Kenya, and Kesatul Raine, Congo is a moon, Imiga, and Sotik, Koga, and Lane, Kago Mua, Chigole, Magitaro Gutich, Chiago Numbunen, Ko, and Alega Sitimo, Ke, a moon, Gigo Negasinotan. But for me, if you ask me, the Kalenjin nation, the people of Bomet for that matter, were not heckling Davis Chirchir. They were sending a message to William Samoy Araproto. And indeed, William Ruto realized the same and responded to them. Mumesema kwa mfano hapa Bomet mambo ya stima. Na mimi naona <coughs> Naona mnapigia kelele waziri wangu Davis. Mnasema ajawapanga na stima. Wacha niwaambie story. Si ndio? Sasa hiyo maneno ya stima. Hapa Bomet Watu 50% ya Bomet, 81,150 people tumawekea stima. Sasa ile imebaki, iyo 50% ingine, mimi naelewa. Na nitapanga. Na huyu Davis, hamesikia vile mmesema. Mawa kasi? Ange na ale kuhuru waji ole katenji gizi jero. Kuhu. But why, would, but why would the people of Bomet decide to do whatever they did to Davis Chirchir? I'm getting some funny comment here by a gentleman called Colenius Rono. This is what Rono is posting. Huh? Kipchumba Murkomen was the main target, Akahepa. Bomet is a no-go zone for him. Leo angejua kwa nini ndengu siyo mboga. Pia oa gunja shingo. Kanyaga kichwa. So it's alleging something here that indeed the people of Bomet were also waiting for Kipchumba Murkomen. I don't know why, maybe I'll need to dig deeper. But the truth of the matter is that the event in Bomet is significant politically speaking. So in this video, I want us to analyze why Davis Chirchir was heckled in Bomet. But before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Allow me to dive in. Why do you think Davis Chirchir was heckled? First of all, who is Davis Chirchir? Davis Chirchir is one of William Ruto's key allies. Davis Chirchir is the one who is normally hacking the system for William Ruto, according to Kenyans. That's not according to me. In 2013, he was accused of having access, accessed IBC servers. In 2017, the same. In the last election, the same. He was actually... William Ruto's chief agent, if I'm not wrong, was it? Was he the chief agent? Or it was Uru Kenyatta's chief agent during the last election? So the truth of the matter is that when it comes to William Ruto's election, Davis Chirchir plays a very critical role. And that's why he was rewarded by being appointed as the minister for energy. But why would he be kicked out? Because the people of Bomet really know who Davis Chirchir is. 
They know it's one of William Ruto's key allies. By the way, it is raining outside here heavily, but I hope you guys, it's not interfering with the, with our content. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you the first reason why the residents of Bomet have called Davis Chirchir. Number one, there is, there is, number one, there is silent rebellion against Kenya Kwanza government in the Republic of Kenya. I know it will take Kenya Kwanza a long time to realize that, and it will be late. Let us just go back a bit. This thing began in uh, Gidurai when uh, th there was that roadshow, when uh, Kameme FM uh, presenters were addressing people, and they thought William Ruto was still very popular, so they wanted to pass William Ruto's greetings to the residents. The residents said no, they wanted Uhuru. So when they, in, they invoked the name of Uhuru, the crowd went wild. From there, William Ruto went to Kikuyu town at the beginning of the KCPE. What we witnessed was that the residents there really did not bother for the first time. Kikuyu constituency is critical for Ruto. Then after that, William Ruto was in Mombasa the other day. And indeed, you saw the people of Mombasa heckling William Samoy Arap Ruto. Yesterday, William Ruto was in Kirinyaga, and indeed I did a comprehensive analysis about the reception in Kirinyaga. In case you missed it, you can watch it. But look at how these people were watching William Ruto while he was speaking. They were not really bothered. Bei ya mafuta imepanda kila mahali. Lakini kama Kenya, tulifanya mpango kwa sababu wakati nilingia ofisini siku ya kwanza, ma petrol station zetu nyingi haziku kuwa na mafuta. Mulikuwa munaona watu wanapiga foleni kwa petrol station. Ni kweli ya mazikweli? Mafuta ilikuwa imekosekana kwa sababu madola ilikuwa imeshindikana. Ime, ime Mimi nikaenda nikaongea na watu wa Saudi Arabia. Nikaenda nikaongea na watu wa United. And today, Bomet. Bomet is William Ruto's backyard. You would expect the people of Bomet to even try and hide their displeasure. Especially the fact that the president was there. But they express it. It means there is something wrong. There is silent rebellion. And it's just a matter of time. William Ruto is definitely going to be a one-term president. Unless he's going to change. Or unless he has other plans. Sahi ground hiko mbaya. Na sio uongo. Na kuambia. Tuko na time. Tunaisa change vitu. Lakini kura itiswe sahi. Mutuko vuraishi otakunyo wa maju. Otanguko. Otashindu wa kapsa. Leo hivi vile tunaongea kura itisho saa hii utashindwa haki ya Mungu nyasa ya jeri kende. Ninakwambia vizuri tungali tuko na four years utarekebisha vitu. Number two, it is now clear that William Ruto's policies are not working. How many cabinet secretaries accompanied Ruto to Bomet? How many do you think? Several. But why do you think they only targeted Davis Chirchir for heckling? Because Davis Chirchir is the face of the fuel prices. After Raila Odinga dossier, Davis Chirchir will become one of the most unpopular individuals in the Republic of Kenya because of the cost of living, which is as a result of the increase in fuel. So the people of Moment really wanted to heckle Ruto, but they can't heckle Ruto over the cost of fuel, which is as a result of the poor policies by Kenya Kwanza government. The truth is, since William Ruto took office, nothing is really happening in the Republic of Kenya. You can't count the number of people who have been employed. Of course, you can count the number of jobs which have been lost. There's no major infrastructural development which is being initiated with, by this government. Of course, he explained and made sense to me that they were going to stop any new projects so that they concentrate on the previous ones. But which one are ongoing? If, for example, the one between Mamboleo, which was supposed to go to Miwani all the way to Moroni, is not being done. Which one? So the truth is, the silent rebellion and the policies of Kenya Kwanza are not sitting down well with the, with the, with the Kenyans. And William Ruto will realize this when it's already late. Number three, it also confirms 
that there is kind of a disconnect between William Ruto cabinet and Kenyans. They need to read the mood. These guys knew William Ruto was coming. I'm 100% sure that William Ruto even got the intelligence. So what stopped them by yesterday from trying to address some of the issues? And in fact, finally, the residents were, 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 were protesting against uh, constant power blackouts. There's always power blackouts. So they can't do their, their things. What to a steamer, I mean, welders cannot work. You know, there's power blackout every day. The cost is just too high. You know, so there is a disconnect. These guys need to figure out how they are going to connect with that. And that's why Murkomen decided to avoid coming there. Because I think these guys were also planning to ask him some questions about the state of roads in Bombay. And number four, this rebellion, this heckling, is as a result of the cost of living. And that cost of living has been caused by one thing. Or one factor, the finance bill. I don't know how William Ruto is going to continue like this, but that finance bill is going to destroy Ruto. The only advantage Ruto has is that Azimio are not organized. Because Kaluzo Musyoka can fashion his campaign just on one thing. That for me, I'm going to contest for the presidency and I'm just going to win just to reverse William Ruto's policies. And he can list them. That immediately I am... I, I win as the I win the presidency. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to reverse that finance bill. It has to go back to eight percent. I'm going to re reverse the issues of NHIF where there's a lot of confusion. You don't even know how much you are supposed to pay. The next thing I'm going to do is petrol. I'm going to ensure it's controlled and it comes down. I'm going to review all the taxes. Re remember how William Ruto explained to Kenyans the number of taxes. That are causing the fuel to go up. But immediately got in. That's the first thing he increased. And lastly, the residents down there were sending a message to William Ruto. A coded message. That boss, let us not cheat you. Things are not right. So let us wait and see how William Ruto and Kenya Kwanza are going to respond. Because Uru, Uru Kenyatta is also now out there. And is uh, kind of endorsed Kalonzo Musoka. And I can see his uh, William Ruto's allies are already out People like Moses Korea responding to Uru Kenyatta. Uru Kenyatta just told these guys, man, I'm no longer in the presidency. Just leave me out. Because these guys everywhere, they mention Uru Kenyatta. They mention Uru Kenyatta everywhere. So let us wait and see how these things are going to unfold. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.